Senua's real story is revealed in the visions and voices that she hears, such that the further and deeper we go into hell, the more we reveal her backstory. I never gave up hope that we could find a way to actually visibly see the characters instead of just hearing their voices. Don't give up. So when it came to casting, I sneakily um, cast for their face, how, what they looked like, as well as their voices. Do you hear them? So during development, we started to run some tests to see if we could bring characters into the game in a different way. For example, we ran a few tests with Kinect cameras to see if we could use them as cheap 3D scanners, but the noise levels of what we were capturing were far too high. We also did a test with uh, green screen video, where we captured Melina and projected her face back onto a 3D model within the game world. And this worked pretty well, but it was quite technically difficult and fiddly to set up and get right. I must help them. They were from we also tried using 360 video to capture scenes. The problem with this is the resolution of the um, video images. You can see the pixels and even with heavy post-processing, it's still logistically quite difficult to shoot 360 video that fits well in a 3D world. Not all of these experiments were successful, in fact none of them were, but in the process I learned what doesn't work and what could work, and I felt like there was a way to mix video with 3D real-time in a way that wouldn't look out of place. Now by this time the VO sessions were coming up in a matter of days, and so I made a very late call to shoot video um, during these sessions because I didn't want to miss the chance of having their characters in the game even if we weren't 100% sure of how we were going to get them in there. But there was one problem, which was it meant we had to get all of the actors in costumes. Luckily, my friend Jess happens to be a costume designer and makeup artist, so I asked her if she could help out. And she only really had a day or two per character. It was such short notice, but in the end, she did a really great job, and it was a lot of fun. Who are you? Who is she? The main cast consists of Stephen Hartley, who plays Senua's druid father Zimbal. How much movement is going to happen in the town? Because it's not going to be action. Okay. Well, there'll be a bit of movement. Let me go! <laughs> no! 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 Ever put sugar in my tea. Oliver Walker, who plays her lover, Dillia. My father cannot understand your darkness. Ellie Piercy, who plays her mother, Galena. Oh, do you see the faces? Chipo Chung, who plays the narrator. Once again, hell is reaching deep inside of her. I'll be right here, releasing close so I can speak without alerting the others. As well as Melina Jurgens, who plays Senua. And Nick Bolton, who plays Senua's old friend, Ruth. It's an email for you, Senua. Your agent. <laughs> I want you for Vikings. <laughs> yeah! Early on in development, one of the service users described their flashback visions in vivid detail. And it wasn't quite like in the movies where you have lots of quick cuts. She described them as happening all around her, um, as if they were sort of unclear or out of focus. and she was present during them. Who's that? So based on these descriptions, Mark went away and did some tests in Unreal to see if he could come up with a style for the flashbacks that represented these ideas. And we were pretty happy with the results. After we shot everything, we picked one scene featuring Senua as a real-time CG character and Druth, played by Nick Bolton, as a green screen video to see if we could mix them and actually make them work. It's a good habit to have in these dark times. So our challenge was to integrate the green screen video of Druth into a scene that we had already captured featuring Melina. Druth, is that you? 
We did this by first blocking out the timings for both performances in an edit so that they matched. Andreas, thank you. For my tales of the Northmen, they call me Druth. Next, we had to make sure that the in-game camera matched exactly what we had shot during the live-action video shoot. Get your vow to guide you in this life and the next. The tricky part was then to apply post-processing effects so that the two characters felt like they were part of the same scene. So we applied the flashback post-processing effects first, making him go in and out of focus, uh, blooming the image so that you wouldn't see any pixels, applying a light that affected both him and Senua in the same scene to help connect the two. Who are you? It's just a memory. Drew? The very next day, Game Informer actually turned up in the studio to do a feature on Hellblade. And so I watched them play the game and I was waiting for this scene to come up and I was just hoping that they wouldn't notice that it was video. I will tell you my stories of hell if I may walk with you. They played through the game, they played past the scene, they didn't say anything, they carried on playing. It was only about 30 minutes later when they reached another scene featuring Drews, this one that we hadn't post-processed and fixed, that they went, hang on a sec, is that video? It was only then that I felt like, wow, that was mission accomplished then. Go and speak to your daddy. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs>